Good morning to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Monday, June 10th, 2019. This will be pretty short and quick today. I'm getting ready to hit the road, making my way to Tallahassee, Florida, for the premiere down there of the uh, documentary on the big screen. I'll talk about that at the end of today's update. Real quick, a tour around the um, Western Hemisphere, roughly. Uh, we'll start over in the Central Pacific. Nothing out near Hawaii, of course. Eastern Pacific, no areas of concern there. And the same is true in the Atlantic Basin. If we look at the animation here of the Atlantic Basin here, the GO-16, I'll draw it in green here, dark green, nice and clear in the main development region, nice and clear all through the Caribbean. Pretty dry down there. You could use some rainfall in areas like Puerto Rico, Jamaica, the Leewards and Windwards, Greater Antilles, etc. You guys definitely could use the rainfall. Unfortunately, not much in the way of relief uh, in that department anytime soon. Any tropical wave activity that's out here along the intertropical convergent zone, uh, those tropical waves are fairly dry right now. You can see a fairly dry overall air mass. Definitely some dust coming off of Africa, which is very typical this time of year. You also notice here fairly strong upper level winds cutting across. Again, something that is very common to see in June, uh, this cold front up here in the subtropics and the overall unsettled weather trying to continue in parts of the southeast where we had flooding rainfall in the Carolinas once again up in the foothills, even all the way down into what we call the Sand Hills area, Lewisburg in vicinity, flooding rain, um, Lincolnton up near the, um, it's not too far from Charlotte. Uh, and this pattern, the wet pattern, will generally continue for this week. And then this cold front's going to come down and make things rather pleasant for a few days in the lower 48. Uh, related to the tropics, one of the things that we watch are the trades and um, the trade winds. And this diagram shows us basically the past, <coughs> excuse me, Something is going on. I should, should have brought my water up here with me. Uh, the past, the present, and the future. Uh, these are the past trades. Basically, when you see these oranges and reds through here, that would be a westerly wind burst or westerly winds or an anomalously um, westerly component to the trades. And the blue areas are your trade surges, where the easterlies, in this case, since we're talking about northern hemisphere trades, are stronger than normal, stronger than stronger than average, and so this is the EPS, the Ensemble Prediction System, which is the Euro, and basically this is forecasting uh, a pretty good trade surge here. This is the green box that I'm outlining for you, showing that blue area, pretty robust trade surge, generally west, or I'm sorry, east of the Dateline, which is 180 degrees longitude, so. You can just draw this down onto the map. That's what's nice about this graphic. And you can generally see, all right, so this is your area that we're talking about through here. Uh, that's represented through here. And then this is time, starting today, June the 10th, through the next several days towards the end of the month. This progresses forward in time. And, you know, it's a time series, right? And uh, you see that we're looking at an enhanced area of trades across this portion of the tropical Pacific. Now, a little bit of an increase in trades through here, which is what this represents, but then a fairly, you know, more of a westerly wind uh, component or relaxation of trades out there just off the coast of Africa out into the main development region. Bottom line, without nitpicking this to death, this is what we want to watch right here, this trade surge in the heart of the Nino area, the El Nino area. That's going to put a big dent. That water blowing across, the trade's a little stronger than normal. Blowing across will act to stunt the El Nino even more. That's the takeaway from this. All right, let's start this over. I forgot to go to the beginning. This is the next 10 days on the GFS from last night's run. At the 850 millibar level, a couple of things to notice. The um, green blobs, here's your front coming through. Let's use a different color here, shall we? Let's use red. Uh, the front coming through the southeast and um, energy associated with that uh, starting to wane away over the next 10 days. 
the severe weather risk for the lower 48 becoming less and less with time. And you notice too that this Bermuda High, uh, the subtropical ridge, tries to get established. Pretty good flow coming out of the southeast to the northwest in through the Caribbean Sea into the Gulf of Mexico. Notice out here in the eastern Pacific though, it looked like a tropical cyclone tries to develop. Let's keep our eyes on things. Maybe some action trying to develop here south of Mexico over the next several days. This is a 10-day animation. We're going out 10 days into the future. Where are we here? Let's scroll up a bit. Um, this is about 100 hours out, so we're a little bit more than four days out. So around day five or so, it looks like a little bit of energy takes place or takes shape down there. See it? There it goes. Eh, let's stop this and go back just a little bit. Where'd you go? There you are. All right, so there it is right there. You can see it south of the Mexican coastline. Yeah, we'll see. This is When does it get its start there? Oh, it's still over a week away. I wouldn't worry too much about it. Um, this area of the southeastern Pacific is supposed to have hurricane activity this time of year, so if something develops, it won't be unusual. But this gets its start there, what we call its genesis, um, at about a week out or so. Let's go back. Yeah, about day five, day six, something like that. A little bit of energy starts to take shape. You can see it right there, just south of, what is that, Guatemala, El Salvador, that area, the Gulf of Tehuantepec, which is right there. So we'll wait and see what happens with that. Something to keep an eye on. Some of this energy does come through the Caribbean, and it winds up in the southeastern Pacific, and then it gets the green light to develop from there, sometimes. All right, like I said, severe weather, not a problem. Just general thunderstorm activity, no organized areas of severe weather for today. That's what the green shows. Looking at day two, which is Tuesday, tomorrow, marginal risk right up the heart of Tornado Alley. So if you want to drive from Amarillo all the way up into Fargo, North Dakota, uh, be my guest. You might see some interesting developments scattered throughout the region, but no widespread outbreaks. And that is the case here on day three. Um, just marginal. And then look at that. Some uh, mountain thunderstorms over parts of the west there. These over the Rockies, eastern New Mexico, south central Colorado. Those can be picturesque if you get an opportunity to get a picture of one of those. All right, heading to Tallahassee, make my way down there today and um, try to get a good night's sleep and then get ready for this big event. You know, Florida got rocked by Matthew in 2016 and then, of course, Irma. Hermine first, by the way, in 2016. Let's not forget Hermine kind of set the stage of this barrage that we've had. Uh, Hermine, and then Matthew, and then Irma, and then Michael in 2018. And I've put together this documentary that uh, people are very excited about. They are talking about it on social media. And it really um, makes me feel uh, just proud, you know, like, proud of your kid for doing something amazing. I'm proud of the work. It's like being proud of, of your spouse or your kid or whatever, a co-worker. You get the idea. Uh, and I'm very proud of this project. And uh, a lot of people helped me over the past 14 years and beyond that. We're talking about a 25-year career so far. But really the last 14 years of this remote camera project and the development of the weather instruments. We didn't develop the instruments. We developed the way to put them out and safely gather data with the meteorological instruments or equipment that we use. And I've compiled this documentary, and it's called Tracking the Hurricanes 2018. And you, my friends, can join us at the Governor's Square. It's a Regal Cinemas. It's at Governor's Square Stadium 12 in Tallahassee, Florida. Um, we've probably got 50 to 55 people that I know, 90% uh, sure, are going to come. The theater holds about 100, 105, so you are invited. Tell your friends, your family, just come on out. We'll have a couple people helping to greet you. You don't have to go to the box office. You just come in the front doors of the theater. We'll have a couple guys there. They'll be wearing the Hurricane Track t-shirts. We'll have a poster, and it's an Auditorium 10. So you know, if you get to the ticket taker guy or gal uh, where they scan your app or take your movie ticket, just tell them you're there for the hurricane documentary. 
in Auditorium 10, and uh, we should have somebody there to intercept you and show you to, to the right auditorium. It'll be great to meet you. Uh, the, the show starts the screening at 7 p.m. I'll do a little introduction, and it's about an hour and 46 minutes long. This Wednesday, June 12th, 7 o'clock, Tallahassee, Florida. And by the way, if you're interested in hosting one of these in your city, um, it's about, we'll just round it up, it's about $2,000 to rent the facility and to get me there. You know, i got to travel. I don't get to travel for free. Um, I'm not that famous where people are giving me away, giving away hotel rooms to me. Maybe one day, right? Um, but seriously, if you want to host it in your city, I don't care what city it is, you know, I'll try to get there. It's about uh, 1750 bucks to rent the theater and then, yeah, a few hundred dollars for me to travel there. You know, nothing extravagant. And I'm serious, I'd be glad to host it. Orlando, Miami, Houston, any city that's got a Regal Cinemas. And I say Regal because the file, the movie, is converted into what's called a digital cinema package from Regal. So it pretty much has to be Regal Cinemas because they have this hard drive that I would ship around to the various theaters. We've done two so far coming up, including Tallahassee. Wilmington was on May 30th, Tallahassee coming up on Wednesday. If you want it in your city, just let me know. Send me an email. I'll show you that at the end here. All right. So that's the screening coming up. It's also available for uh, rental or purchase. You can go to hurricanetrack.com forward slash 2018. I'll put this in the description of today's video on YouTube. And, of course, it's on Amazon Prime Video. Uh, and people, boy, it just melts my heart when they say on Twitter or elsewhere that they watched it and what they thought of it. And it's just incredible. It really makes me feel good uh, about the project. And it's an important look at the contrast. There's a lot more to this than, oh, wow, that was amazing hurricane video. Yes, it is. But it's the story. And then there are stories inside of those stories. And if you have seen it, you know what I'm talking about. It's got a great music soundtrack. I should know. I composed it. <laughs> and I'm actually going to do a featurette about that coming up next week. Um, talk about that later. But I want to show you how I did the music. But, um, you know, it's, it's a look at Florence. And you compare that to Michael. And you say, wow, what a few inches of rain can do. Few, right, with quotes. <laughs> more like almost three feet and you know we saw that with Harvey we saw that with Allison but this is the latest generation of hurricanes last year's season that we will remember future hurricane seasons because of you know it starts to fade over time Katrina coming up on 15 years ago we still remember it but it's not fresh for some people of course it still is that lived through it so this is an important look at the contrast between a category one and what it can can do 22 billion dollars at least in damage Florence uh, scores of people killed that shouldn't have been well all deaths are hopefully preventable you would think but then you contrast that to category five Michael and luckily only a handful of people perished uh, because of the incredible watch and warning system from the National Hurricane Center and the Weather Service etc all of that is woven in to this story that I call Tracking the Hurricanes 2018, available here on Amazon Prime and on my website. You can get it through YouTube, through PayPal. I'll send you the link myself if you want to order it that way, hurricanetrack.com slash 2018. All right, so you ever need to email me about anything, uh, that's it, hermarketgmail.com. I try to respond as fast as I can. And um, that's about it. I'm going to finish packing a few things, then I'm going to get on the road and make my way down towards Tallahassee, a nice day ahead for travel. Got a little rental car. <laughs> Everything's all set. And by the way, I want to thank Scott and Amy Boggs of the Boggs Law Group in St. Petersburg. They are the sponsors, the law firm. Uh, they are policyholder advocates. In fact, the video that... I have from the GoPro in Mexico Beach has helped some policyholders down there to have uh, insurance companies help them out where before they were going to kind of be left out and the uh, Boggs Law Group part of that and they are sponsoring this event in Tallahassee so 
it's a public service. You know, we're doing some good here. Uh, we've actually helped some policyholders get the insurance money that they need, that they deserve, because the wind, as you will see, was very destructive before the surge ever even got there. That's a whole other issue, but it's part of how all of this works. And uh, big thanks to Scott and Amy for helping to make this happen in both Wilmington and particularly here in Tallahassee, Florida, not far from ground zero of Category 5 Hurricane Michael. Hey, I hope to see you guys on Wednesday evening. I'll be doing an update tomorrow and Wednesday, of course, while I'm on the road, and Thursday, and probably Friday. It's going to take a few days as I'm down in Florida doing some stuff, but you'll hear from me throughout. All right, have a great rest of your Monday, a great rest of the week ahead for you. Thanks for watching from your side of the screen. I do appreciate it as always. MarkSuddeth, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll talk to you some more tomorrow.